Seven things that Jesus said defile a man. It's found in Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. Chapter 15 of Mark's Gospel kicks off with the religious leaders accusing Jesus about the fact that his disciples did not wash their hands before eating bread. This is when Jesus takes them on by challenging them about the fact that it's not what goes in but what comes out of a man that defiles him. Here's the scriptures, Matthew 15, 15 through 20. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, fault witness, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. So let's look at this list of seven things that the Lord Jesus said defile a man. And when we say man, we use it in a generic sense, meaning man, woman, boy, or girl. But whichever way you cut it, there's only two genders. Now Jesus emphatically makes the point that these negative things emanate from within the human heart and proceed outwards. They are all listed in verse 19. Again, evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. I shall deliberately keep the first of the seven, that's evil thoughts, for the last, and you'll see why shortly. Let's look at the other six in order now. Murder, Exodus 20 verse 13. In the Ten Commandments we read, you shall not kill. Now we may not have literally murdered another person, but the Lord Jesus says if we have the intent, if we have anger in our heart against a brother, it's as good as murder. We use the expression in English, if looks could kill. How many of us have been guilty of murder if that were the case? So none of us is exempt in that sense. The third listed by the Lord Jesus is adultery, which is Exodus 20 verse 14. You shall not commit adultery. Need we share any more about this? We live in a day and age where sexual promiscuity and adultery is rampant. Unfaithfulness to one's spouse is commonplace today. By definition, adultery is a married person, husband or wife, breaking their marriage vows and sleeping with a person other than their spouse. We don't need to say much more about this. It's basically self-explanatory. Fourth, fornications. This often seems to get a pass, even in churches. It applies to single or unmarried folk sleeping around or having sexual relationships as and when they please. Just because a person's single doesn't give them the right to sleep around. Jesus calls this fornication, and it is sin. There's another expression commonly used that is often shared with young people where they are told by some of the Middle Asia elderly folk, Oh, you're young. You can go sow your wild oats. That is so wrong and is ill-advised counsel. Cease and desist, sir or ma'am, if you've been saying this to young people. It's basically another way of telling them or saying, go ahead and sleep around with as many partners as you'd like to now because you're single and unattached. Go get drunk, do drugs, do whatever, sleep around, do whatever you feel like or you want to now because you're young and single. Well, it doesn't matter if you're single at any age for that matter, because once you get married, you'll have to settle down, so to speak, and there'll be a lot less running around then. Revelation 21, 8 tells us that fornicators specifically, along with murderers, will have their part in the lake of fire. The next sin the Lord uh, says that will defile a man is thefts. Exodus 20, 15, you shall not steal. This includes the stealing of any items. It could range from the stealing of a library book to a pen from the office 
to major items when the boss is away, or even borrowing something from someone with no intention of returning it at all. We all know how that goes. After a while, some people tend to forget who they lent what to, and then we just keep it as our own. Another form of theft is buying something on payments, like on loan for items or even a mortgage, and then if you don't make the payments on time, you're defaulting. I'm not including here if something major happened like a disability or you lost your job suddenly or if there was an accident, you still ought to communicate with the company or the bank or the lending agency and make payment arrangements. So I'm talking about people who live beyond their means, borrow and are up to their eyeballs in debt and then default on their payments. These are all forms of theft. Beyond just being irresponsible, it's theft. Also in today's world, we have online theft, which is a whole different ball game. But all stealing or theft is sin, listed by the Lord Jesus specifically. The next is false witness. This is very often used in the Bible in place of the word or term for lies or lying. Revelation 21, 8 though plainly says, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire in hell. That is sobering. But remember, whenever we hear or read about bearing false witness in the Bible, it's talking about lying or exaggerating or gossiping or spreading false rumors, rumors about others. In fact, Exodus 20, 16 says in the Ten Commandments again, you shall not bear false witness. God sees this as so important because in those days, when there were no cell phones with cameras that everybody could have today, no CCTV cameras around the malls, etc., all someone needed was to have a couple of false witnesses to say that you committed a serious crime like murder and you could be put to death for that in those days. So it was an evil thing to do to bear false witness, to lie, to spread a false testimony about somebody else. It was gravely serious. Today we have, like I said, numerous ways of finding out today. If someone is really guilty or not, you could prove your innocence with a genuine alibi. Plus we have DNA testing from crime scenes, etc. that can assist in exonerating an innocent accused person. That's false witness. Now we go to blasphemies, the seventh in the list that the Lord Jesus mentioned. Exodus 20 verse 7. This I submit. You know, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Blasphemies. This is among the highest form of rebellion against God, I submit. When we take or use his holy name in vain, or when we use the name of our Lord Jesus Christ flippantly, as if he were just another mere mortal or even less, consider this, friend. We even address fellow humans as sir or ma'am. Yes, sir, to our boss or to a friend. How much the more ought we to reveal the living God, creator of heaven and earth? God will not lightly pass over such contempt of his person or his name. You may say you are not guilty of this, but when people say, oh, jeez, what they're really doing is using a contraction of the name of Jesus as a crude slang. Likewise, when someone stubs their toe, you often hear them say, Oh, Christ! Again, they do not take the name of any other non-Christian deity. It's only the name of Christ or Jesus that is taken in vain. God will not wink at this, my friend. It is sin. It's a most unbecoming evil in his sight. So that covers two through seven. And I said we'll keep the first one for the last, and that is evil thoughts. Why do you think the Lord Jesus puts this as number one? And I've kept it for the last to deal with this. I believe it's because every single one of us falls down right here. We often fall flat in this particular area. I could personally aver and state that I have, and probably you too, I have never murdered anyone in my life nor committed adultery, nor committed blasphemy, taken the Lord's name in vain. Well, but when it comes to thefts and false witnesses, who among us 
hasn't stolen a few items here and there and told a lie now and then. Everyone has, everyone. But evil thoughts, though the lies and stealing might have been occasional and may be diminishing now, evil thoughts, every single one of us fall down here and fairly often. Hopefully, the closer we grow to Christ, the more we will allow the Holy Spirit to sanctify us. Then even these evil thoughts would diminish in number and frequency. But not one of us can say we are not guilty of having evil thoughts. This is, it would seem, all-encompassing and is why the Lord Jesus Christ lists it first among these seven sins. So be on guard, friends. We need to put on the mind of Christ to combat this. In conclusion, solution to overcome these seven sins. Repent afresh and anew. God loves you and will forgive you. He will cleanse you afresh with the precious blood of his son, Jesus. Get in the word of God, the Bible. Fellowship with his children at a local church. Receive the word of God on a regular basis and fellowship with the saints or the children of God. Then you can pick yourself back up again and press on to live for Christ. If you've been blessed, friend, would you subscribe? Hit the notification bell, like, share, and comment below. God bless you.